Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today's pen resurrected from the dead is a 1950 Schaefer Craftsman. The trade name Schaefer gave to the filling system of this pen is Touchdown, but technically it's a pneumatic filler. What's the difference between a pneumatic and a vacuum filler you might ask? Well, actually they both suck. That's right, it sucks. But in different ways, of course. When I purchased this Craftsman at an antique store, it wasn't in working condition. To get it writing again, I had to order some parts from England and perform some fairly delicate surgery. Find out how a pneumatic filler works and how I got this one working again right now. <laughs> And today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1950s Schaefer Craftsman touchdown filler. And what I'd like to do today is look at some of the history of this pen, show some before restoration video, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And here is what the pen looked like when I found it at a local antique shop. And then there was a Schaefer in the group, and this is a W.A. Schaefer Fort Madison fountain pen with a 14 karat gold nib and it says Schaefer's there there's no white dot on it and this has a 14 karat gold nib 33 the nib looks like it's in pretty good shape that feed is ebonite I do believe this is a touchdown filler and there's a little ink window there that will be an interesting restore because there's a whole bunch of things you have to do to get this one apart. Schaefer didn't invent the touchdown pneumatic filler out of whole cloth. It was an evolution from a previous design by the Chilton Pen Company which went out of business in 1941. But first, what is the difference between a pneumatic and a vacuum filler and how does the touchdown work? Both pneumatics and vacuum fillers use positive and negative air pressure to expel air and draw up ink. In the early 1920s, Seth Crocker created a pneumatic filling pen by blowing in a hole at the back of the barrel which contained an ink sac. Blowing in the hole compressed the air inside the barrel and squeezed the sac expelling the air. And when the pressure was released, the sac reinflated and it sucked up ink. Seth's son, Chilton, refined the design by creating a mechanical way to compress the air by extending and retracting a barrel extension. It's not all that dignified to be caught blowing on your pen. After World War II, Schaefer was looking for a way to replace its vacuumatic filling system, which works by retracting a rod that has a piston attached inside the barrel of the pen. I can demonstrate this with a Wingsung 699 vacuum filler. Placing the nib in the ink, you retract the knob and the rod at the back of the pen, which withdraws the piston to the back of the barrel, and you push the rod down. You can see that piston moving down through the barrel inside there, and that creates negative pressure back here, a vacuum. When you get to this point here, the chamber widens and releases that vacuum. You can hear that sound of the air being sucked up back in there, but if you have this in the ink, it sucks up ink instead of air and fills the pen. Here is a 1948 Schaefer Tuckaway that has the Schaefer's vacuum filling system that they trademarked as a vacuum fill. Schaefer took Chilton's design and refined it by adding a metal sack protector around the rubber sack that kept the sack from overinflating when the surrounding pneumatic tube was retracted. You unscrew the tube at the back. I'm gonna leave this over the ink. And you withdraw the tube and then when you press down instead of creating a negative pressure what it does is it compresses the sack inside the sack protector expelling any air or ink that's in the pen you can see it's expelling ink right now but when you get to the bottom i'm going to dip this in the ink you get to the bottom it releases that pressure and sucks up ink as the ink sack inflates again because at the end of the touchdown tube there's a little impression right there and when that meets this hole right there it releases that pressure again so you move it down it compresses the sack and then releases the pressure at the bottom of the stroke and sucks up ink it's a clever and elegant system and it's back in production again with this 
Chinese pen company, Pen BBS, just releasing this new model 489 touchdown filler. It has the same kind of system, only the section is removable on the 489. So you can see the sack protector, this aluminum or metal tube, and there's an ink sack on the inside. And the difference with the Pen BBS is that this is removable and you can see the ink inside there. And it works by the same principle with that little notch right there that ends up being released at the end of the travel, compressing the sack. And then you can hear it sucking up ink or air in this case. Schaefer further refined the touchdown filler in the 1960s by introducing a touchdown filler that could be removed and replaced with cartridges when preferred. And Pen BBS has kept that part of the design as the touchdown filler and sack protector can be removed and fitted with, you guessed it, Schaefer cartridges. But let's get a closer look at this Craftsman. Overall, it is a relatively small torpedo shaped pen. Here it is with my Pilot E95S, and you can see it's only slightly longer than this pocket sized pen. But when they're posted, they're just about the same size. The Craftsman was an economy model selling for $3.75 in 1950, or what would be $45 in today's money. It came in colors black, burgundy, evergreen, Persian blue, and burnt umber brown, and is very understated with the typical Schaefer's clip and a single small gold cap band, and no Schaefer wife dot for the lifetime warranty. From the top, we see the pointed black plastic finial, and then the typical Schaefer clip of the period, which is not spring-loaded into the cap, like the more expensive Snorkel Valiant, where the clip is spring-loaded like that. But the clip is fairly stiff, but it is usable. And it has a Schaefer's deeply stamped or engraved into that clip. The cap tapers up and then is straight to the thin gold cap ring. There's a small step down to the barrel, which tapers up slightly straight to about here and then tapers back down again to the blind cap which has knurled lines in it for added grip. The barrel is engraved with W.A. Schaefer Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA, and made in the USA. Gosh, do you think it was made in the USA? If you're unsure, don't worry. There will be more evidence to come. At the end of the barrel, just before the blind cap, you can see a tiny hole, which is essential to the operation of the touchdown filler. The cap unscrews with a half a rotation to reveal the groove section and the number 33 Schaefer 14 karat gold fine nib and ebonite feet. And there's a nice Schaefer flare uh, towards that nib. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has polished up beautifully compared to its found condition. Here's the found condition on the left and the polished up condition on the right. The nib has a heart shaped breather hole. Schaefer's 33, made in the USA, again, and 14K for the gold content. The cap posts deeply and securely, which makes it a decent sized pen in the hand and very nicely balanced. Not bad from the company that invented the balance. It's a very light pen at only 13.8 grams, and unposted, it borders on being a little too short to write with. Too small and dry. Well, I wouldn't say that. But in a pinch, it's not bad. The section is small, but being so slim, I tend to hold the pen back here towards the barrel. And it's decently long and nice and girthy up here on the barrel. Now I'll show you some of the process of restoring this pen. I shot the following video while I was disassembling and resacking the fountain pen. So here I have the Schaefer Craftsman touchdown in pieces. And we have the, the barrel. I haven't actually taken the touchdown out of there yet. I will. I've got a new sack for it and a new O-ring. And here's the sack protector. It goes over the sack and attaches to the section. Here's the section. And here's the feed. Now this feed, when it came out of the section, was bent. Uh, for some reason or another, it was on a on a pretty severe angle. So I put my heat gun on it just briefly to get it to be a little bit soft because it is ebonite. 
black hard rubber and then I moved it back into place very gently and then there's the cap and I've taken the nib out it's a Schaefer 33 14 karat gold and I polished it up with my jeweler's cloth on both sides and it's come up beautifully the way that I took the nib and the feet out of the section I put a socket wrench in one of my ink buddy holders put a, a drill size gauge on top of that that would hold the section I get my microphone on my body that helps and then I took an allen wrench which fits the section and then tapped it very gently with a hammer and that pushed that feed down and out of the section so now before I put the new sack in it I'm going to take the um, touchdown sleeve apart and use a small thin slot screwdriver because there's a small slot screw inside there and we just loosen that screw yeah there we go and the cap comes right off and then you can just tap the the touchdown sleeve out of there it's always good to put a little bit of a little bit of silicone grease on that sleeve just a light coating of it to make it slide and we put that nut down inside so it comes out the other end put that back down into the barrel but there is an another o-ring right there uh, that needs to be replaced unfortunately i lost mine the one that's in there right now is in pretty good shape so i'm going to keep it and we can just hand tight that screw very very light tightening because that plastic can crack and there our touchstone filler is nicely serviced now we need to put the new sack on the section and then replace the sack protector and line it up and see how much excess I need to cut off so I'm gonna mark that with my fingernails and nip off that much We'll take our lifetime supply of shellac and just paint the section, the nozzle on that section, just like that. And we're going to try to get it on. With a little bit of a twist, add some to the outside between the sack and the section especially that seam between the sack and the nozzle just to make sure there's no ink leakage right there and we'll let that dry overnight and while we've got the touchdown barrel removed we can look down inside here and see that there's another uh, o-ring that's in there that needs replacing uh, and it's very hard to see and it's very hard to get at so I've got a, a needle here and I can maybe point to it it's right right there so you have to sort of tease that out of there and put the new one in so I'm going to try to tease that out off camera I can't do it on camera and then I'm going to put some silicone grease on that new o-ring and slip it into that slot get out of my nook that's what she said that's what she said that's what she said there now I've teased the old o-ring out and I've got the new one here with some silicone grease on it and we're going to try to tease that uh, slippery pig back into that slippery pen sort of makes you want to treat me with more respect doesn't it you're an absolute mess I'll have to do that off camera so I was able to take a toothpick and push that ring down in there it really helped to put this light through the barrel while I was doing it to help me guide that ring back into the slot but now it's in there tight so that was slightly easier than I thought it was going to be now I've got a new seal in there and when you put your finger on this you should be able to hear that sound and I'll do it against my microphone and that's the the air escaping out of this little hole right here so you gotta make sure that hole is 
free of any debris that works nicely so now that shellac has dried now we just need to put it in the sack protector and we're going to really get out a little talc and dredge the latex in a little bit of talc to make it slide easy and then we slide it in give it a push and it clicks there are those crimping edges there and that sack protector is a little bit loose so i'm going to give it a little bit of a push with my punch off camera to make sure that's nice and tight the cap and barrel i've polished it up with some Meguiar's Swirl Remover Number 2, which is a, a mild abrasive polish. And then I've waxed it and buffed it with some Conservator's Wax, which is also known as Renaissance Wax. And it's come up very, very nicely. And now all we have to do is put the feed and the nib together. And I'm going to put the Ebonite feed so those edges come just to where the shoulders meet on the feed. And I only get one shot at this to get a good grip and push. Seems to be lined up very nicely. And then because this section is threaded, I don't need to shellac that down and the pen is ready to ink up and write and now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the 1950 schaefer craftsman touchdown with a 1952 schaefer valiant snorkel touchdown two 1950s waterman taper rights and a 1948 schaefer tuckaway you'll be seeing this 1948 schaefer tuckaway in a pen resurrection sunday video soon as it was just restored by jack hernandez this pen has a compelling life story part of which you can see in the still existing teeth marks in the gold cap my wife and i knew the original and only owner of this pen and she gave it to my wife shortly before she passed at the age of 105 last year there are stories in this pen now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see that when posted, these smaller pens become full-sized and nicely balanced. The Valiant is very long, but I don't mind writing with it. It's a really nicely balanced pen. And both the Valiant and the Tuckaway have the same kind of conical tubular 14-karat uh, gold nib with that characteristic Schaefer upturned point, uh, which is sometimes called a Waverly nib. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You can see that the taperites and the tuckaway, especially the tuckaway, are not designed to be written with um, unposted. The Valiant is fine unposted, and the Craftsman isn't too bad at all. They're all 14 karat gold nibs. This taperite right here has not been restored yet. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Schaefer Craftsman touchdown filler. And one thing I failed to mention during the parts and features portion is that the section has a semi-transparent ink window right there. It's amber in color, uh, but right there you can see your ink level when it's running out, which is a nice little feature. And this is the Schaefer Craftsman and it has a fine 14 karat gold roughly number five size nib. Let's check the wetness. It's nicely wet. And it's very, very smooth with a touch of feedback. But when I first inked this pen, 
probably the first ink it has seen in 50 years, it was pretty scratchy with a lot of feedback. And here is the writing that I did with it when I first inked it up. I said it was very wet with tons of feedback here. The tines were not badly misaligned. I adjusted them slightly and then worked on getting the nib smoother by polishing it with some 8000 grit followed by 12,000 grit micro mesh. And now it's just lovely wet and smooth. And the ink is of course Waterman's Serenity Blue. The only ink I put in any vintage pen that has a sack. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, it's not a flex nib, but boy, you can really get some bounce out of it. So again, it's a very nice vintage kind of feel. And the line the nib makes, with no pressure on it, is a 0 0.4 millimeters which makes it a western extra fine or a Japanese fine and for our quote and some reverse writing it's quite scratchy but it actually does it it's very very thin and some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. It's a very, very wet, juicy nib. So here are some of my thoughts on the resurrection of this Schaefer. It was a lot of fun. It was a challenge and I didn't know which way it might turn out. But I was really pleased with the results. It's nice to get a pen looking good again, but the real test is whether it will write and write well. The nib looked beautiful, polished, but it wasn't until I inked it up and wrote with it, and after a bit of nib smoothing, that I really felt that I had succeeded. The pen is slim and light, and although it isn't a top of the line Schaefer, it writes beautifully, is well balanced, and a really decent, reliable fountain pen. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.